If you've worked with buttons on Discord.js before, you may not realize this, but there's many different ways that you can handle them. For example, you can use an interaction event listener to always listen for button interactions with a specific ID. This is what we've done in the past in my roles with buttons video, but what you may not know is that you can also use something called collectors to listen for button clicks after you've done something like sent a reply with buttons attached to it. This is very helpful for things such as help commands, where the bot is listening for button clicks after a help embed was sent. Now, this is not only limited to buttons, but you can also listen for new messages, reactions, and stuff like that. In this video, we'll be focusing on buttons, but if you guys are interested in message or reaction collectors, then be sure to let me know. Now, before we get started, if you don't have a Discord.js project set up, then I'll have a link to a GitHub repo down below where you can clone the starter project. Now, the goal for this video is to make our bot reply to our message with buttons attached to it, and then listen for button clicks on that specific message for 10 seconds. After the 10 seconds have passed, the bot should disable the buttons from even being clicked. So let's get started. In our code, the first thing that we're gonna be doing is importing a few things from Discord.js. This includes the button builder, the button style, action row builder, and component type. Now, don't be intimidated with this. I'm gonna explain what each and every single thing does. Now, as I mentioned, we want the bot to reply with buttons attached to a message. So let's use a message create event listener. So we'll say client.on and then message create. And the first thing that we're gonna be doing is checking if the person sending the message is a bot or not. So we're gonna say if message author bot. Then in this case, we're gonna return because we don't want the function to run any further. Now, I want the bot to reply when I send the message ping. So in this case, what I'm going to say is if message content does not equal to ping, then I'm going to return. So the code below this is not going to run. Now, let's go ahead and define our buttons that we can attach to our message. So I'm going to create a button called first button, and I'll set this to a new instance of the button builder class where I can set a label. And the label is basically the text that shows up on a button, which I'm going to set to first button. The next thing is the style of the button. So we're going to say set style, and this is going to be button style dot primary. Of course, you can set this to whatever you want. There are a bunch of choices, but primary is, I believe, the blue color. The next thing that we need is a custom ID for this button. So we're going to say set custom ID, and then we're going to pass in a unique ID specific to this button. So for this, I'm going to be saying first button, and that's pretty much it for the first button. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this and set this to second button. And I'm gonna change the label to second button as well. Button style, maybe I'll change it to danger, which is, I believe, red. And then the custom ID is going to be second button like this. Now we're ready to throw these buttons into an action row builder. If you guys don't know when replying, you can reply with a content as well as components. In our case, this component is going to be a row of buttons. So let's create a variable called button row and set this to a new action row builder. And in here, we can add components using the add components method. And we're going to pass in first button as well as second button. Now let's go ahead and reply to this message. So I'm going to say message reply. And in the content, I'm going to say something like choose a button. And then to actually attach the button to this message, we're going to add another property called components and set this to an array of all the components. In this case, it's just one and it is called button row. So let's save this and run our bot using node index.js. Back in Discord, I'm going to send a message saying ping and our bot is going to reply saying choose a button. And I have a type over here, which I'm going to fix in a moment, but we also have two buttons attached to it. So if I click on first button, well, nothing's actually going to happen because we're not handling it. And more importantly, we're not listening for it. So let's go ahead and deal with that. First, I'm going to go ahead and fix the typo. Now what we want to do is we are going to store this reply message that was sent to Discord in a variable. And I'm going to call this variable reply. And I'm also going to add a wait in front of it. And because we're using a wait, our function must be asynchronous. Now, okay, why did we create this variable? Well, the reason is we want to attach some collectors to this message so that we can listen for button clicks. So the way we can do that is we're going to create a variable called collector, and we're going to set this to reply.create message component collector. And this component is going to be whatever's inside of this components array. In this case, of course, it's going to be buttons. 
Now this is going to take an object where you're going to have to set the component type. As I mentioned, the component type is going to be the buttons that are inside of this component. So to use that, we're going to say component type. And this is what we've imported from discord.js dot button. So now it's going to be collecting components which match this component type. In our case, this is buttons. Now, how do we actually get access to whatever is being collected? Well, we can use event listeners on this collector variable. So in this case, we're going to say collector dot on. And in this case, we're going to pass in a string called collect. And just like an interaction create event listener, we have the interaction object right here. Now, this event will be triggered when anybody clicks on these buttons. However, I only want this event to be triggered when the person sending the message clicks on the button. So how do we do that? Well, we can create something known as a filter and we're going to create this right before the collector. So I'm going to say filter and this is going to be a function which resolves to a Boolean. The parameter is going to be the interaction itself. And in the interaction, we're going to say if the interaction user ID exactly matches the message author ID. So basically this filter is going to be true if the person running this interaction is the same person who sent the message. So how do we use this filter? Well, next to the component type property, we can set the filter to filter. And because they both have the same name, we can just go ahead and remove the value and it will work the same way. Now, because we used custom IDs, let's go ahead and reply to each button based on their custom ID. So in this case, we're going to say if interaction dot custom ID exactly equals to first button, then in this case, I'm going to reply to this interaction by saying interaction dot reply, you clicked on the first button and we can return after this. And I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this code for the second button as well. So if the custom ID of the interaction was second button, then I'm going to say you clicked on the second button. If I save this file and try to restart my bot, and if I go back to Discord and send a message saying ping, now if I click on first button, it's going to say you clicked on the first button. And if I click on the second button, it's going to say you clicked on the second button. However, this does not have a time limit. I can keep on clicking these buttons as long as my application is running. I want there to be a time limit of about 10 seconds, but of course you can change it to whatever time that you want. So to implement this time limit, what we can do is next to filter, we can add another property called time. And this will be the number of milliseconds that you want this collector to run. So in this case, I want this to run for 10 seconds and 10 seconds in milliseconds is 10,000. Don't worry about the underscore. JavaScript doesn't actually read it. It's there for developers to be able to split numbers. So anyway, we have the time set to 10 seconds. So let's go ahead and restart our bot. Okay, so back in Discord, I'm going to say ping again. And now if I say first button, it's going to say you clicked on the first button. And if I click on the second button, it's going to say you clicked on the second button. However, if we wait for some time and then try to click on the button once again, well, it's not going to do anything because the time ran out. But when the time runs out, I actually want these buttons to be disabled so the user knows that the time ran out. So how do we do that? Well, if you remember, we saved the reply that we sent in a variable. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create another event listener for our collector. So we're going to say collector dot on and this event name is called end and it will be triggered when the collector time runs out. And for the callback function, what we can do is we can go ahead and take the first and second button and set the disabled to true. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to say first button dot set disabled and we're going to set this to true and we're going to duplicate this once again and set this for the second button as well. Okay, so we've set it to disabled and these buttons already exist in the button row. So let's just go ahead and edit the reply. So we're going to say reply dot edit. And in this case, we want to edit the components. The component is going to be the button row. And if you want, you can also change the content to whatever you want. Something like you ran out of time, try again, but I'm not going to do this. So I'm just going to remove it all together. I'm going to save this and try to restart my bot. Back in Discord, if I type ping, I can click on the first button and it's going to say you clicked on the first button. And if I click on the second button, it's going to say you clicked on the second button. However, if I wait about 10 seconds, the buttons are going to be disabled and I cannot click them anymore. So that's about it for button collectors. If you need any help, then be sure to join my Discord. And if you want to support my content and get some exclusive perks, then be sure to check out my Patreon. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.